Hey everybody, it's Nigel Jenkins of Laughing Heart Music and LHM Records, and today I'm chatting with Tom Cochran, who is a photographer, videographer, and arts organizer based in Newfoundland and Labrador. We chatted about the best ways to reach out to freelancers, how to build your following on Instagram, and building community through the arts. Thanks so much to Music NL, the province of NL, and ACOA for sponsoring this video series through their Press On grant program. And thank you today to Rough Waters Brewing Company, based out in Deer Lake, for this sweet t-shirt. All right, thanks for watching, hope you enjoy. Right, right, is it sort of as a result of your work on sort of the projects you've been doing out there that you've decided like Woody Point is where you're living now, or what's the what's the pull out that way for you? Well, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like literally right now. I'm looking out at Bombay and Grosse Farm Mountain. Um, but yeah, no, I, like I, I, I've done a lot of work up here for the past ten years, and um, it has felt more and more like home over that time. Mm. And um, yeah, definitely, there's work, um, but even more so than that it's just like a place that feels right to be in. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the things I've been talking about through this video series with people is their their sense of place and like why they choose Newfoundland over other bigger centers. And you're mm -hmm. sort of your, I mean, it's mostly music business focused and you're, you, you do work in the music industry, obviously, and you do work outside of it with photography and other sorts of events based stuff. But um, ha is there a draw for you or was there ever a point when there was a draw to, to, to bigger centers or have you always just known it was going to be sort of Newfoundland? Um, when I was a lot younger, um, there was definitely a draw away. And then I lived away. Like I did live in Toronto for a couple of years, yeah. but uh, that was like a school, school focused thing. And, um, but that that like going away just made it so clear that I needed to be back in Newfoundland <laughs> yeah um, and I remember I, I'm sure like countless people who've lived away can can relate to this experience but um, I remember you know being on the plane leaving and being like this isn't right like this doesn't right. feel right at all and um and and like seeing those ads like they I, I think they still do i mean nobody's been on a plane in so long it's hard to remember what like <laughs> but, but like you know the ad, they they would have like the newfoundland tourism ad on like the screen behind the the seat back screen and it was just like heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking mm -hmm. every time um but yeah being back here uh is good and and i mean gross morn is just it feels it feels so right um I, I've said I've said this before, um, so I am I, I am pulling this out of my pocket and not coming up with this on the spot. But <laughs> Grossmorn is uh, is the place where I feel the most um, myself, um, right. and 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 it yeah, it's good for you. It's really good for you. And sure, like I guess in some ways there there's draws to bigger centers, but um, my work doesn't really. Um, isn't the thing that pushes that like my work is so focused in rural communities um, all along the coast that uh, it just makes sense to be here and sure like I fell into that kind of role I fell into like the working with small arts festivals and, and musicians in small places and all sorts of stuff like that but um, yeah it uh, I, I'm really lucky to be able to do what I do and, and to do it in a place like this. Yeah well hopefully I've done a good job introducing you in the <laughs> front end of this thing. Um, but it, how much of your work is the the photography part of what you do now through the year? Is that? Um, it's pretty big percentage. It's like photo video split with like some communication stuff on the side and like organizing stuff on the side. Um, but yeah, like my full-time job is definitely a photographer, videographer. Right. And that's, I mean, that's one of the things I thought you could speak to really well from like an artist development perspective is uh when new artists emerging artists or anybody is looking to reach out to someone like yourself as a photographer or videographer service provider what are some of the things that they can do to reach out the right way um uh, uh, a great question um i think know what you want or at least know what you don't want um, there's definitely an aspect to like reaching out to someone who makes images as someone who makes if you make music and you want someone to make images um, 
there are definitely times when people do that and they don't really know what they want, but they've got, so they're looking for that kind of back and forth. Um, but it, it helps to have some guidance. Um, it helps to have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, because, uh, yeah, in the same way that musicians want to get paid for gigs, um, you know, people like myself need to get paid as well. Now, that's not to say that there's not the potential for bartering in the same in the same breath, right? Like, sure. If you're a new musician, um, yeah, like if you can make it worthwhile, uh, even if that's not financially worthwhile, but like it's there's a cool experience or going and doing the the act of creating the piece is going to be really interesting for some reason. Then um, there is definitely possible like a way to find a middle ground, um, but yeah like knowing what you can offer like what you can bring to the table is really um is really good and i think too like um is look at people's styles right like like look at what people make and what what they what else they've published and um see if it's going to match because right. it can it can be awkward to try to like shoehorn a musical style and a visual style together don't often sometimes don't work yeah um, and there can be ways to find again middle grounds but um yeah i think go after people who who whose vibe you really dig and and the types of visuals they create are really line up with the sorts of music that you want to make yeah it's interesting that's like a common sort of pitfall or problem i run into with artists i chat with artists i work with is having that clear sense of direction for for visual stuff Mm -hmm. often i mean they're so good at being musical artists I, that it, it is a whole other field to, to be able to think visually spatially about what you're trying to present um that complements the sonic side of things well are there certain kinds of uh sort of questions or discussions that you that you commonly have with artists to kind of you know pick that out pick it apart with them when you're doing the back and forth stuff Yeah, um, I, I think that I, I, an easy question to start off with is like, is this a performance video? Uh, like for making right. a video, yeah. like, like yeah. are, is this a, well, not, not even like if it's a live performance video, is it like, are you gonna be playing or look like you're playing right. to the track in this video? Because that automatically creates like, okay, this, it, it'll be shaped in a certain way around that performance. Yeah. Um, and then, like what what are you what what are you thinking about tell me about this story tell me about the story of the song tell me about how you wrote it tell me about um if it's not super obvious and clear in the tune itself tell me give me the backstory of of the characters and 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 is it a narrative piece like is this a narrative video and does it follow a storyline or is it just super kind of out there and weird and that's cool too and, yeah, and we yeah. can try to cobble we can cobble together imagery from all sorts of places, but the artist, the musician, you kind of like, you're making something for them, right? Like you're being commissioned to make a thing. So, mm -hmm. so you want them to like have us to guide the process a bit and then yeah. I can help them guide that process, but they've got to know a little bit about what they want off the start. And then, and then I can start trying to bring that out uh, with them. Yeah, I feel like it's always um, easier to help guide someone who has a clear vision than to like try and start from scratch. Because I, 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 I love talking creative stuff and I love coming up with ideas for things. But like, uh, I think it's on the artist to have that creative vision out of the gate, and then for folks like you and I who are involved to help, yeah, see them to it and execute on it. I think so. Yeah, and like the projects that are easiest and and frankly most enjoyable to work on, and the and the artists that are most enjoyable to work with are the ones who have like a really clear artistic vision, but they're also willing to like, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? They're willing to like meet you in the middle, of say, okay, they've got a really cool idea, and then I, which would then inspire me to have maybe a cool idea to go with that yeah and then it all just like it works really well together and that's really fun because then you can just create something cool together and that's right. a really good feeling that's like those are my favorite projects because then it's like okay it's a collaborative process it's not just me turning out something for you to use as a music video 
it's like, no, together we made this thing happen and that feels great. Off the top of your head, is there like a favorite visual project you've worked on or like a favorite collaborator creating that kind of a piece? Um, hmm, you, you've, done a, you've done a bunch. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, I love working with the once. Yeah. Um, uh, Phil takes the lead, on, Phil Churchill takes the lead on a lot of their visual stuff and like often has like a really clear vision of like what they're thinking and so anytime i get a chance to work with them it's great also just like a ton of fun and a good hang yeah um yeah i don't know like I, there's been a whole bunch of stuff i really enjoyed um i shot a bunch of live sessions with nick earl um geez a year two years ago i don't know okay. a while ago um and it was just when nick was like he was starting to do the indie rock thing uh and we shot them in lewisport at citadel house and it was just like it, it was a live video like band playing and i'm just filming it but but they were they brought an energy of a live performance to a what was essentially a living room right um yeah. and it was it was a ton of fun um yeah there's been a slew that i and and frankly i'm really bad at documenting my own work like the work sure. even though i know it's out there but i i'm really bad at documenting my own work which is a thing that i like I'm like okay work on your cv uh <laughs> <laughs> always yeah. it's always on the list <laughs> update your cv and it never really happens but um i'm sure there's a lot of artists and people in general who can relate to that yeah it's, it's funny i wonder how much uh someone like you even really needs a cv anymore though i feel like s certainly in I guess, but man, yeah. I don't know. Like you, there's a sense of like, I think within a certain community, sure. Like you can, you, you get known for creating things and, and with a certain style and all that sort of stuff. But um, it, once you're, once you're reaching into new communities or, sure. or trying to get different gigs um, in different places, then yeah, you really do need that. You need that, 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 back end right like you need your website up to date same as a musician you're yeah. applying for a festival in a place you've never been <laughs> your website better be up to date you better need to have a decent epk all that sort of stuff that i'm not good at <laughs> yeah i guess i guess i like from my perspective you're just like this superstar level kind of person so uh, <laughs> sorry don't I'll mean to, you, very, don't mean to flatter you mid conversation that's very sweet yeah very sweet. <laughs> but uh it, i mean on that superstar level sort of thing, one of the questions I had wanted to bring up is, um, again, trying to get into like real practical artist development level kind yep. of stuff. Um, you've amassed a really big Instagram following over the mm -hmm. years. And I'm wondering if there's anything that you've done on that platform that you think might translate for like other creative types that isn't necessarily photography specific. Because I think most most of your Instagram, it's, it's your photography work, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, at Tom Cochran, you can go follow me on Instagram. Yeah, uh, plug. Yeah, um, I I think that I mean, it's not a huge following, but it's like it is. I guess it's big for for especially for Newfoundland. Um, yeah, and I it's I think it's consistency. To be one hundred percent honest, it's mm. consistency and and understanding that um, different people come to your profile and your images in different ways. So like if someone's already following you, then cool. Cause they see it in your feed. Right. Yeah. But you're also trying to remember that um, people may have just went to your profile and they're like looking and they're scrolling, they're doing the, the scroll down through <laughs> and, and you, you want to have some sort of visual consistency there. Um, even if it's, if, if you're uh, showing photos, great. If you're showing uh, video music, video clips, cool. Like, but whatever is showing up in that grid, you yeah. want it to be consistent. I always talk about like, um, uh, uh, this is like a larger Canadian artist, but July talk, mm. um, the fact that all of their imagery is in black and white. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, some ways it's like, okay, it's a shtick and it's cool. But when you go and look at their uh, Instagram page, it feel, it gives you a feel right away of like what this is. Yeah. Um, and if you're a, um, I don't know, indie rock band, like pick some, I don't know, pick some colors, right? Like right. Uh, fr friends of mine who have Instagram pages, which are a lot more popular than mine, 
they won't publish uh they go with like the moody vibes uh yeah. and uh you know like it, it it has to be like greens and blues and right. like maybe pops of color like brighter colors here and there but like it's dark tones and they might take amazing gorgeous images um or videos uh that have are full of color but they won't end up there right so it's that thing of like remembering how um just how the game works because it's it is a bit of a game it is a bit of a a back and forth and and for me um my my work on instagram is almost all newfoundland related um it's like 99 percent uh it's a lot of aerial photography um and yeah if you scroll through there's a couple outliers for sure but um, for the most part, it's they're all going to have very similar feel, and it's also understanding um, who and and how will your con- content will yeah. grow. Yeah. Uh, Everybody hates that word, but it's, I know, it's I know, a word. <laughs> um, it's terrible, it's absolutely terrible. How will your art be amplified? Like how? What are the mechanisms for it to grow and then to help you grow your online following? So, for me, um, I was creating stuff. Uh, around Newfoundland and then there are other Instagram pages that are larger that talk about Newfoundland so like Newfoundland Lab of Tourism sure. and then like step above that would be like Canada Explore Canada um, yeah. the Canadian tourism brand and uh, so like understanding the sorts of work that they like so yeah. you know you're not like shoving it down their throat but you're just kind of like okay cool like this sort of thing might help get into this audience uh and as an artist you it doesn't mean you can't make other stuff um you know i shoot portraits i love taking pictures of animals and stuff like that and birds and whales but um that stuff's a lot of that's not going to make it up onto the onto the main feed it'll make it up into the instagram story you put whatever you want in your instagram story as far as i'm concerned yeah but um yeah just kind of like make that uh make that feed consistent and have a good feel to it i like the stories for that purpose sort of as a catch-all throw stuff up there like yeah this isn't a post but like put it in the stories and then and then if it's maybe a little too personal or private but like i want to share it using the close friends function sure i almost did that today actually and then i deleted it pretty quickly uh (laughs) stephanie and i (laughs) stephanie and i uh just found out the 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 uh sex of the child we we're into oh, having wow. in the yeah and so i put like i had took a, like, a little picture of the ultrasound photo yeah. and i was like here's the baby's spine here's the baby's penis <laughs> <laughs> and i was like that's not appropriate and here i am just saying it anyway on a thing that i'm going to put on the internet yeah i know here we are now yeah I, and uh, I you know what i think people will get this far into it because what you're saying is great i think people will stick in this far so unfortunately i've just kind of shot myself in the foot it's out but, there now. Uh, <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Child. That's very thank cool. you. And actually, um, uh, oh, sorry, you go ahead. No, no I, I mean, I was just going to say uh, that uh, your stories are, are a way to show your personality a little bit more, mm-hmm. right? So, I, I, again, coming back to a musician, if your if your live feed is a lot of like rehearsal photos, live photos, um, you know, maybe someday there'll be live photos again. Um, and, uh, like just your, I don't know, writing and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you can be a bit of a goofball in your stories and you could be hanging out and cooking dinner and I don't know, like just show your own, your own self there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I mean, I, I think maybe to sort of like try and condense what you're saying is the feed is a little more curated and the stories yes. are a little, are like way open. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, That's the way I look. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I like I like the idea of having sort of color palettes that you stick to as well. I think I don't know how many artists or industry professionals are going through sort of like heavy branding focused exercises or brainstorming, but like having the color palette for the album cycle, yeah. or even for the artists that you stick to forever. Um, you but could. definitely, yeah, definitely for an album cycle. I mean, July Talk is a great example with the black and white stuff of just like. But he- but even beyond that, like if you're, again, going through that cycle, so going through the branding uh, work of like you're working on an album, uh, album artwork, and you might be working on like 
merch and new yep. web de website design. I don't know. Um, think about colors. And it's not that you can't share photos, but figure out how can you edit those photos or um, do something to them so that it fits within a certain look yeah. that, um, yeah, that you can get out there. And that you hope becomes identifiable with what you're doing over time, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Br branding 101. <laughs> that, oh man. Yeah, I know. There's there's a there's a there's a, literally a course. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. I've been doing um, some free Coursera courses online through the pandemic. Cool. Um, yeah. Actually, after I after I quit my law job in 2014, that was something I, I did a bunch of. Was I went to the Halifax Public Library and took all the like web design, web development, HTML courses I could find and uh, taught myself and you, how to build. And then you realize that Squarespace is there. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, actually what I did was I built like a really terrible website for my notary public <laughs> business, yeah. but it was good enough that like it got to the top of the Google searches and I was just like, oh uh, cool. Mobile yeah. notary public in Halifax for a couple of years while I was building up the music business. And yeah. that was that was really what I was earning my revenue at for the first couple. Yeah. But that's a skill that's a whole other skill, right? Like SEO stuff and like getting yeah. up to the top of Google rankings. It it matters. Yeah. You know? It actually does matter. And sure if you're a musician and it might not if your name is unique, but yeah, if if you want to show up in search terms like newfoundland musician or right. newfoundland rock or i don't know whatever but like that's yeah that's stuff that you've got to really figure out are you doing that sort of stuff regularly for yourself like trying to get like newfoundland no. photography <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well okay uh no i say i laugh and i say no because i'm again i'm 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 not a great person on um keeping things up to date however uh there are some things like um my my instagram my username is at tom cochran but like the name field says tom cochran and then there's like some slashes or something it says like newfoundland photographer or newfoundland photo right. photog or something um my website definitely in the title says newfoundland somewhere and i think it says west coast i think at some point it said cornerbrook um and it's actually worked like I've gotten gigs because people have searched for like Cornerbrook photographer and that's popped up. Uh, yeah. So like, you know, it's stuff that you might think never will ever have an impact, but you never know who's going to be looking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, and it's something it's, it's interesting. It's not something I think to do for my own company, but probably mm -hmm. should like search engine optimization for artists who might be looking for a manager or a label it's like i i rely maybe a little too heavily on the word of mouth stuff like yeah and i think, know I think me most know of us me. i think most of us do right like yeah. most of us uh are, are just and that works it does work um but when again going back to like working in, it with other um in other markets yep. other areas of the country or other countries um word of mouth doesn't really matter i mean yeah. it does because the music community is small but like they may have, they may know zero people from uh your network and yeah. so they're like literally gonna go look for newfoundland musician or something like that and it uh it, yeah you might get a gig out of it it might be like <laughs> it might be a corporate gig that isn't very good but you know what it might pay a bill so <laughs> Yeah, generally corporate gigs aren't very good, uh, but they yeah, but they pay bills. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the trade off of of the corporate gig world, and uh, I love all the agents who bring us corporate gigs. Yeah, you throwing don't. that out there. Yeah, um, how do you think about? I mean, this kind of ties into the Instagram sort of thing, but then moving into maybe a broader topic. Um, how do you think about community building in the all of the different projects you've taken on? Because I know like. Uh, Years ago, you had the Corner Brooker blog, and there was Old Crow magazine, which I think was, was that your project, or was that in partnership with Gross Point Summer Music? So, yeah, it wasn't mine. Um, I, I ran it for yeah. three years, yeah. Um, and, you know, you've been in bands yourself. Like, how much are you thinking about that, uh, building out the community, creating opportunities within the communities that you're operating out of when you're, when you're doing your creative work? um always yeah um <laughs> always it's always been uh so like 
I mean, going back to like Corner Burger, which was started uh, about 10, probably 10 years ago this month, really, now I think about it. Um, that was a way, it was a, it was a, a news and events website talking about Corner Burger, uh, because even at the time, there wasn't, none of the news agencies like CBC, Western Star, whatever, they had terrible web presences and almost no social media presence. Yeah. And so there, it was very difficult to, to find what was happening in our, in our city. And so it just is a thing we just started and rolled out as a way to connect people. And uh, I think what, what it really, really worked for is for uh, artists, musicians, theater people, visual artists, whatever, as a place for them to uh, talk about, or just like say, hey, I'm having a show. Yeah. Um, so like the events calendar and stuff was always hugely popular. And there were, like I wrote articles about all kinds of um, musicians that were coming through because nobody else was gonna do that. Like nobody else is gonna write about a touring musician. Um, with no connection to the area, even if they're going to be, if you know it's going to be an amazing show. So having that like little bit of extra local media coverage can go a long way. But it's it was always about um, trying to bring the community together. Uh, and like by community, I mean the city, but even more than that, the arts community. Um, it and, was... Just, I mean, sorry to interrupt you. It was so, uh, it felt it's so important to to me and to, I mean, a lot of people, I'm sure. But like, I, I used that website a lot and I went to it for events and stuff. And I mm -hmm. there was like one time where you wrote about a show my band at the time did, Say Fire yeah, with I, I Ali remember, Waterman yeah. and Gerald yeah. and Brad yeah. Nichols and Craig Mercer. And it was like, yeah. it was awesome to be written about. Uh, and that yeah. wasn't going to happen any other way. No, yeah. And it's, <laughs> some, it's such simple stuff. Like, mm. um, for an artist to have a for them to have a link that they can put on their website yeah it's like someone wrote a thing someone else us. yeah someone else wrote a thing about us and it's yeah. like not associated with us and so what it was a, a performance at the gazebo of majestic lawn <laughs> totally yeah. fine but yeah. like yeah it totally um it does make a difference and so you can put that in your media kit right uh and and yeah, I, I think that goes a long way. Um, you know, Old Crow was a uh, was a Gross Morn region focused project that was really about sharing what was happening here, uh, and from like you know history stuff to stuff about nature to a lot of music and musicians that were coming through. Um, and it's always been about for for me at least personally, it's always been about um, just creating a really cool community uh and there's an there's another project um that i've been working on for the past couple of years excuse me called uh Co the cottage collaborative art festival yeah which uh is like an overnight excuse me a weird overnight uh i'm pointing over here because this is where North <laughs> yeah, that's is. where it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh it's a it's an overnight art festival in an in the old cottage hospital in uh, Norris Point and uh, which used to be a hospital and then was decommissioned as a hospital but now is like a really cool community space and um, yeah we 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 only did it two or three times and it's gotten derailed one or two years but um, because of you know global pandemics uh, yeah. but uh, it it has created a a cool community of artists uh, from of all kinds of different backgrounds who for whatever reason have ended up in uh, the Western Newfoundland area. And uh, it's a chance for them to get together and make stuff. And you don't get that very often. Like it's, it's very rare that you're given the privilege of making stuff with other artists with like no, um, it doesn't mean anything. Like, like right. it can be, it, it can be amazing or it can just be something you're thrown at the wall and see what happens. And that's awesome. Uh, and there's been some really cool collaborations out of it. Uh, we've been able to do like, uh, we did some, a cool little like digital artist residency where we brought in five digital artists from across the country to hang out for a week and see what happens and amazing things happen. Um, but so that was like uh, the, the, the space, the building, 
is in integral to the, to it, but the community is actually the community of artists, which have come from like a very large, uh, a large area, and uh, that's a project which I think is very very cool. Plus, like you make art overnight for twelve hours in a row yeah. in, an old, in an old hospital. Yeah, it's almost got like I mean, when I I haven't participated, so I don't know. But thinking about the overnight vibe, that's almost yeah. like uh, I think back to high school grad, mm -hmm. like doing the safe grad overnight kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's like a, I don't know, there's a big element of fun and wildness and whatever yeah. that would be infused into that kind of an overnight experience. It's it's a ch it's a challenge, right? Like yeah. it's literally a challenge to stay up till six a.m. <laughs> um, yeah. in April when it's not like you know it's cold it's often sometimes there's bl a blizzard uh, dark out actually, early dark out early um but it's at that it is at that cusp of like oh like is spring is this is this spring coming maybe <laughs> uh it's not really but it, no not in newfoundland you, no, no but you think it might and yeah. uh and so there is like a bit of a, a bit of energy that comes from that um but it's an it's an endurance project so like you as, as because you're co all collectively trying to overcome this thing which is not fall asleep and to to make a thing together and to do all this stuff together uh it creates some really cool bonds and uh some really special friendships and um and it's just it's an incredible space to work in absolutely incredible space to work in I think that's like the best part and maybe the greatest privilege of working in the arts too is forming those kinds of relationships and friendships through collaboration um and it's so it's so cool that that is that you've made that happen here because i think about where where else can you do that and like you almost you have to go to banff probably right or like you have yeah. to, you have to go outside of atlantic canada well yes yes and no right like i think there's a bunch of this stuff that happens it just doesn't like uh it doesn't maybe not reach your ears like i'm i know that yeah, there used fair. to be a 24-hour art marathon in st john's which then evolved into the Hold Fast Festival, which is an art festival that is very cool. Um, I'm sure there's stuff like this that happens in Halifax. Sure, yeah. Uh, that I that I don't know about. I know there's a cool art festival in Fredericton that does something I think similar. Um, but it's it, yeah, it's it's people who are just uh, you know they want to see something happen in their community, so they just make it happen. Um, and I think that I you know if I could say. If I could get encourage anyone to do anything, it's just make something happen. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the like gift of having someone like yourself in our area is that you so you make things happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, okay, may, maybe sure, but like, yeah. But what I would, what I would, what I would hope is that someone else then is like, because it's it's so easy to fall guilt to fall guilty, fall guilty. Yeah, anyway, to fall into the trap of like wanting something to happen or wanting a thing to exist and i it's not easy to make things happen i totally understand that but like try yeah you know like what the worst thing that's going to happen is it doesn't work and then cool <laughs> and no try one again. no one remembers it in like six months and but you had a hopefully had a good time doing it and yeah like you know with with cottage um it, we've never had like great turnouts by any means you know it's 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 in uh takes place in early april in norris point um where when there's no tourist population there's none of the regular summer population um yeah. people aren't really used to going out to things in early april um but it's not a, like it's never been about the uh the people coming to watch or coming to see it it's always been about for, for me it's always been about the people making the stuff like right. make the stuff that you want to make and if people come and participate or, or watch it cool but like have a good time making it because that's that's all it's for i think that's just true generally of all creative pursuits it's like yeah. you gotta enjoy the the process of making the thing yep and then if anything greater comes of it wonderful yeah um but if you can't find fulfillment in the creation of whatever you're you're trying to put together it's like i don't i just i think the creative sectors are so aspirational mm -hmm. um and I, I think i said this in my chat with dean too but it's like you you get up a level 
and then there's always a next level and a next level and a next level. It's like, even if you were, if you won a Grammy in 2020, it's like, what, why don't you win two next year? And then yeah. three the next year and you've got to sell out all the stadiums and all the arenas. And um, I feel yeah. like there's never a, a ceiling in, in aspirational work that way. And so at the core of it, the satisfaction and the fulfillment's just got to come from making the thing. Yes. For, yes. for it to be sustainable. Yes, hugely. Um, it, you know, you've got to be able to pay your bills. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but you can't, you can't thrive on paying your bills. Like, you know, no. I don't know if you've ever paid bills, Nigel, but it's not very <laughs> fun. Uh, I've had a few bills. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, like you've got to love it. And I, I love, I love making things. I love uh, making photos and, and video. I love making cool, uh, weird events happen. I like curating uh, people and artists so that like trying to match together uh, different people who you think will like be able to make cool things together. Um, and none of that is like, you do, you do all that just because it's it's enjoyable and hopefully there's work that also comes with that and there's hopefully um bills get paid because of that and and sure like notoriety or whatever um but yeah it, it's it's got to be for the love of it yeah cool that that's like i think that's a nice place to leave the conversation maybe just one sort of like silly question before yeah. we go tom sure um, so because we're in the era of COVID and the pandemic and stuff, uh, yeah. if you could have a, a zoom chat, a one hour zoom chat with any living artist or creator, uh, who, who would it be and why? Oh man, it's so hard. I, in, in a lot of ways, I would prefer just to, to not have zoom chats anymore. Uh, <laughs> this has been really, this has been really nice. I'm just... so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, um, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, to be honest, it it would be like, I would love to just have a chat with like pals. Yeah. Not, not, like, you know, uh, like a chill one, like not like, not like a, a Zoom party or anything like that, that you're, you feel pressured to entertain each other or anything like that. But like a, a nice uh, open conversation about art and, and making things because those are the most satisfying. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I miss having those kinds of chats with friends. The, I think the last time I had like a real nice chat that way was at Nova Scotia Music Week in Truro in November. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was roommates with uh, John Mullane. I don't know if you know John. He's a producer in, so. in Halifax. He was in a band called, fronted a band called In Flight Safety. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, anyway, John and I were roommates and I got super sick on the Saturday. And so I was just like in the room the whole day. Did you hear the bell? Yeah. Uh, that's fine. I'm ignoring it. I told people I was recording. Um, and uh, anyway, I was sick in bed all day and John would just come in and out intermittently and we'd have chats about music and he'd play a record and we'd talk about the record and then he'd play another one and we'd talk about the, the synth part or the percussion yeah. or the top line or who wrote it, who mixed it, produced it. Um, yeah, those chats are the best when you get. You know it. what's what's interesting about that is that you were sick. Like, I mean, yeah. it sucks, and I feel bad for you. But uh, like the there's something really wonderful about um, the connections you make with people when you're at your weakest. Yeah, uh, and it it it, it you you don't have any barriers. Any like you just like if you're if you're not well or if you're I don't know, exhausted or, or whatever, you, you, you don't have the energy for barriers and you don't have the energy for like not saying something because it's not the right thing to say. Right. Uh, and that's when you just, I think that's when you, you make like your real incredible lifelong friends. Uh, I think that's when you make your, uh, those really special connections. And I think um, to circle back a little bit, I think that's why, uh, cottage works is because at 5 a.m., right. whoever's left at 5 a.m., 
you have you're exhausted and you've got nothing left and so the conversations that happen then are are pretty special you've made it through something together yeah yeah definitely Cool. Well, Tom, I can hear uh, some gentlemen out in my hallway that need to do some work here. Uh, so I'm going to let you go, but thank you so much for having the chat. Yeah, thanks, Nigel. And uh, thank you also to Music NL and the province of NL, ACOA, all the folks who are funding this through the Press On program. Um, anyway, Tom, hope to, hope to see you real soon, buddy. Thanks, Nigel. All Take right. care of yourself. Take care. Bye. Bye.